So we're gonna go ahead and jump right into this thing. So um, first things first, um, I did notice that my patch um, endpoints are um, a little messy at the moment. Um, for instance, I need to make sure that you're only able to update stuff that I assign. So for instance, um, if you go into, oh, I don't have MongoDB up, or not Mongo, but I don't have um, Robo 3T needs to be up, and then I need to open up Postman as well. So I'll just go ahead and do that to get things going. And um, let's see. So um, what I was saying here is that um, our patch, at the moment, there's no way to understand and see if anything that we do here is um, able to put anything in here um, on, the, on the user that we haven't specified. So for instance, the, well, I don't think it's possible to create a new entry on this uh, user, but um, you know, maybe we don't want people changing their permissions or something like that. So um, I just want to go ahead and put some restrictions on that so that way um, everything's nice and controlled. So what I want to do is I want to go here and I want to grab, um, what is this? Uh, let's do update user. Did I even create it? Oh, here we go, update user. So now on this user, um, I want to say, uh, instead of email, I'm just going to test it. So I'm going to say um, body and just see what happens. So let me send this request off. And oh, I never ran the server. So npm run dev. So um, that already clicked out, so should be ready in just a second. All right, there we go. So now what we're going to do is we're going to fire this off again. And um, it seems like we get a bad request. So um, that actually seems fine because if I say email, that should um, I'm trying to figure out what this is. Uh, maybe it's the comma doesn't like. And I, I'm honestly guessing that this, um, just looking at the way things are complete, what's happening here. Yeah, so it's it's telling the same thing over here that um, so now we have that error and you see this is giving us a problem so that's actually this is um, what I'm trying to fix so um, I believe let me cancel that um, send this again and you see now it's going the email thing um, there's actually a few things happening here um, for one this um, router needs to be updated because we created our authorization to go ahead and do some things with um, checking to see if the user can do certain stuff we made it to say um, hey um, you need to get have a token on this thing but um, really this find by ID and update is a direct um, method so it operates directly on our database so that creates a problem for us because we don't want the user um, we don't want we don't want to do this. We have some stuff that we need to do. We have some uh, For instance, we need to make sure that the password um, Wrong one. No nope. We need to make sure that our Password is not modified and if it is we need to make sure that we encrypt it. Also, we have um, Oh, that's actually it. So that that's really the major one um, So let's go ahead and fix this so that way we have that so what we're going to do is we're going to say const options equals an array. And what that array is going to look like is it's going to be all the stuff that users can change. 
And right now, the only thing that I want to give them to change is um, they can change their password. Um, they can change their. Um, they can change their name, and they can change their email address. Oh, I already have that. Um, they can change name, email, password, and that's it. I don't want them changing anything else. So, with that being said, now I have to say I have to do some validation before I jump into my um, my work. So we're going to say um, const is valid request because now we want to see if the request is valid and um, what we'll do is we'll say request dot body and we want to get so we're going to get that so we're going to say actually we're going to say um, yeah request dot body dot for each because um, we don't know we don't know exactly what we're getting when we make this request we don't know what's going to be on there and we don't know um for instance you know we, we don't know if it's going to be name email or uh, or password or all three so um because of that we have to um, adjust that and to do that um we have to um just give me a second i'm looking at my notes to see if i can find it um but um, yeah, so we have to do a um, few things. So there we go, that's what I was looking for. So um, these are the available options at the top. And um, we're gonna create another constant that says updates. And we're gonna say const update. And these are the updates that are coming in. And this is gonna be, uh, we're gonna create an object uh, we're going to use this object, um, I forget what you call this thing, it's class. And um, we're going to turn and we're, we're going to use that, that body object because when you look at this um, JSON, it's, it's an object. And um, that's what these squiggly brackets mean. So we're going to say, okay, object dot, and um, I'm going to say keys, I believe. Object dot keys. And what this does is it gets us each and every item that is on this request so if we had that and then we put um, name on here as well that those two entries would be keys on this object and um, that'll give us a list so we're going to say dot uh, and this is going to be object dot keys and we're going to get the keys from request dot body and there we go that's happy so it should be fine and we can always check it here um, keys from the object and see returns the names of the innumerable innumerable string properties and methods of an object so that's it there and then that's where we drop into the next part we say our options and we say what you can and cannot change and then we say is a valid request if um, now that we have our I think this is, should be in the right right um, yep, it's it returns an array. So now we can say um, updates dot for each, and now we, we have access to those individual um, items that are coming through. So we have item, we have access to this each individual thing coming through here, and we're gonna say updates, and um, and that's the app, that's each individual update coming in, and we are going to say um for each oh actually that's not what we need we want to use something called every um good thing i checked so um the reason being is because we want everything on there see see here so um the difference was um this is a little bit more punctual more um instead of for each it's gonna we're gonna do something on each element we're gonna perform a function on each thing but that's not necessarily what we want to do we want to say that um, we want to say every meaning everything that's in here um, has to exist on this options thing. So um, that's that's the difference there. And um, we're going to say if every update um, exists. So I want to say. Um, 
options dot includes updates then we're good so that's how we know we have a valid request if not then we're just going to kick that thing out immediately and when I say immediately I mean immediately so we're going to say so we're not even going to waste our time down here because you're not even making a valid request so we're going to say if not is valid and I'm not going to say request I'm going to say valid update that's what's really happening is valid update is valid update we are going to throw an error and that's we're going to return because we don't want it to keep going and then the return is like the stop button return says either you're going to return something to give me something or you're going to give me an error um, I don't know, I, or you're going to give me an error, you're going to give me some data, or you're going to give me um, some kind of exception. And um, we may come across exceptions um, a little later. Um, so we're going to say return, and what we're going to return is the response. We're going to return response dot status, and this time it should be a 400 because it's a bad request. You're asking for stuff that you shouldn't. And we're just gonna say send. And that should be all that we need. Um, I'm gonna try this error object. And we're gonna do error, and this time we're gonna say uh, invalid update. Uh, and that is going to be all. Um, so, and then, um, so that's that piece. Um, I wanna go in here and do some stuff. But um, I'm afraid that it's going to tie up our stuff here. So um, let me see what happens if I do this. And I think the reason why this is happening um, may be because I have the, um, nope. This is literally something I have uh, going on in here. Um, not too sure exactly what it is. So, um, forgive me for that. So it's saying at position 34. Usually, um, so that's definitely gotta be in the JSON because it's having trouble parsing something. And um, invalid message on in. And so um, I'm almost certain that that's the issue um, maybe database isn't open. Hmm? Um, okay, so maybe this is, let me stop that and see if that was causing it the problem. I'm trying to connect to the database, so I was already up. And then network is unreachable. Did anything else go wrong? Okay, that's different. That explains a lot. So let me go ahead and drop this and try this again. That's actually something new. I haven't never seen that one before. So let's see here. Let's try. So never seen this one before. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this. Um, actually, I'm going to shut down my um let's see i keep forgetting so um i'm actually gonna shut that down and try to connect to it before i start my server and that might be the mm, nope so this is a task for the internet so let's go and see what we can get from this Cause I haven't changed anything in my setup, so um, not sure what's going on there. Um, let's see, let me see if Mongo Show is not able to talk to Mongo Show. Um, so provide command. So I don't want to do this because I'm not using the shell. I'm using. Um, I can try it. I, I don't think it'll work though. Yeah, it's not recognized because I haven't um, set that up in my. Um, my 
setup. So um, I'm actually baffled here. Um, I'm having an issue connecting to my database. And um, let's see what happens if I just edit it, something real quick. I want to edit it. So I can do this authentication. Um, let's test it. So error details. So we're gonna have to we're gonna have to dig around on this because this is a new error, hence um, unprecedented territory. So um, let's try this. What the error? Is the error message still showing? A network is unreachable. Oh, uh, I know it's not my network because my network works. Um. So something's going on with that socket. Error connect. Um, it actively refused it, so um, hmm, I don't know. I don't know what could be causing that. So um, again, we're just we're gonna dig around here, and um, let's see if we have anything like this in here. And actually, this is um, written in a um, Linux script. So let me go in here, and um, I just need to do. Um, actually, I'm just gonna go to my File Explorer and see if I can find anything with um, Mongo. Actually, I'm just going to Google, look up a .lock file. I want to see if I have anything in here that might be locked, and that's not what I meant to do. Um, because if the file is locked, then that would explain why I can't get into my database. Um, the file isn't locked, then I'll have to start doing a little bit more looking to figure out what's going on. Um, so this is a, a real big trial and error kind of thing. Uh, I'm not sure what exactly happened since the last time I started streaming uh, because I didn't change much there. And as you can see, nothing's even up. So, you know, there's, um, there's a specific problem, but we just don't know what it is. So we have to dig into this and figure out what's happening. So um, they didn't find any .lock files. Um, Oh, dot lock. Okay, let's try that. L O C K. And here we go. So there's a nope. These aren't relevant. These are not relevant. And um, even if we go deeper and we look into some of the programs that we have, I don't think we'll find it. So um, let's just keep looking and see. So Stack Overflow is one of my favorites. If it doesn't work, um, I'm not sure what I'll do. So, <laughs> check for updates. Let's see this. Um, no, I don't know what that is, but let's see what that is. Um, so this is, this is a, this is interesting. Um, I've never seen this before. So let me try this one more time to just, just figure out if I can get any kind of error state or something. A little bit more information is really what I need to figure out how to go about this. Um, who knows with, you know, the way these things are set up and I don't think I actually executed the. Uh, I might have, I might have. Uh, let me just Google MongoDB and see if I can find um, something in my apps. Nope. So um, with that being said, we're gonna relaunch Robo3T, and um, I'm gonna run it as administrator to see if maybe there's any kind of administrative rights that I may be needing but don't have. And excuse um, whoever's writing down my neighborhood right now. Jeez. All right. Um, network is unreachable, so couldn't connect to the server. Um, I really just want this stuff here, and then I'm gonna throw that back up, and we're gonna look. We're gonna explore options for this. MongoDB connection failed. Windows. 
and um, this is really just the troubleshooting process. Um, I didn't know they had a config file. Longlad. C. Oh, there's something there. Here we go. And um, I think this is actually like in my node modules. Yep. So let's go into. Where do they want me to go? Manga data. No, this is what I want. Um, let's go higher up. So let's go down into this PC and we're going to see program files. I want to see if I have MongoDB in here. Here we go. So this is server um, data. And then when we go to DB. Oh wait, this is a dot block file. Oh, here we go. There's that dot block file that they were talking about. So let's see if I can find that um, previous thing where they were talking about the dot locks. And I think you just have to delete the dot lock file. Um, remove dot lock file. Yep. So um, right now the database is just locked, and um, if you delete this file, that should loosen it up. And I'm not sure what exactly causes that to happen. Um, I've, I've encountered it a couple of times in other scenarios, just not necessarily directly related to MongoDB. So that lock file would just completely you, comp uh, prevent you from connecting. So um, now I'm assuming there might be more than one of these. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, look for dot lock in here, and we're going to delete all of those. So anything that's locked is going to prevent us from getting in there. And now that we have removed the locks, let's see if that fixes it. But we're going to dig in this a little bit um, more just to make sure there's not something else in here. Um, can't see it. Um, what was it? This one or was it this one? So, um, all right. It, it seems okay at, at the moment. So uh, I'm gonna go back and just try to connect to it one more time. Um, if not, then we we'll have to dig a little bit more. Still refusing it, and I think all of the dot lock files are gone. Um, so let's see. This is what we're looking for. So now we have our dot. I don't see any dot block now. So that should have at least fixed something. Um, so we're going to go back in here. And we're going to go back to our data file. And we're going to look around. And I don't think this is what I need here. So I'm going to jump back. And uh, I'm going to go one level up. And now I'm looking at the bin file, and I'm not seeing anything necessarily in there that should screw anything up. Um, but it seems like I have to fix something. So what I need to do is I need to register um, MongoDB with my computer to make it um, available in my um, terminal. And in order to do this, um, I need to pull some stuff from um, MongoDB. Um, so it seems like they're creating some some stuff here. So th there's a default DB path that we can use. And um, actually, they have docs here. So um, let's go to the MongoDB docs and see what that says. Um, and as you can see, the documentation is going to be really, really important. Um, on Windows, this path is on the drive from which you start MongoDB. For example, if you do not specify a dash dash DB path, starting a MongoDB server on the C drive stores all files in C data DB. So I didn't do that. Um, but another thing is, I never actually set up. Um, MongoDB in this thing. So um, that just brings us to a whole nother level of deepness that I'm really not trying to go into. 
So, um, let's see. Um, yeah, so it seems like this is a pretty common thing in here. Um, and I'm, let me do, let me do um, Mongo. And I'm going to look for that .exe file. If I can find the .exe file, then um, I'll know that at least... Uh, that's not what I was looking for. Um, sorry about this whole roundabout process of how this thing is going. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, there's no, no straightforward, error-free way of, you know, uh, coding. I've never seen it. Um, there's always some kind of bug somewhere. So, um, let's make the best of this. And I thought I clicked on that exe file. It's not loading up yet. So, um, that might be another problem. So, I'm really not sure what's going on with this. Unless I'm already connected. So uh, I'm just going to create a new one, and I'm not really going to do anything with this, I'm just going to call this test. I wanted to see if it's more so my related to specifically my database or MongoDB in general. And that seems to be the case. So um, it seems like I'm going to have to go the, round, the, the long way and um, follow what these guys are saying. So um, let me go to the docs, and this is really how you start the process, but I don't even have this thing set up. So um, that's where I need to start. In order to get here, they're saying, um, let's see if I can get this thing to get this DB, DB pad. And um, this should help me get that set up. Um, so let me go to my, uh, I forget where you you do this thing um, let's go to in here um, let's go properties no that's not what I'm looking for um, there's this very specific spot where you register I think it's in the actually let me just figure out it um, I'm just gonna do this mongo DB unrecognized Um, Windows. Actually, I might have access to it from my terminal because I installed it a different way. So let me say um, Mongo npm Mongo Mongo DB dash help. Let's see if I have any help on this thing. So let me check my package.json have it here so there should be um, a package in here to help me out with the MongoDB but I can't find it so this is what we're gonna do we're gonna do it the long way um, because that robot 3t is actually um, a third it's a middle middle guy if you run to run CMD Windows command prompt so you know, you when you're starting Z in particular the bin folder in the Oh, okay, so to run, if you use Windows, I would recommend this. So let me go back over here and just see if I can get one of those uh, MongoDB files to run. So I can, so I think the last time I tried that one, let me try this one. And now we're getting something, but it just closed out immediately. So yeah, they're all trying to connect and they're all crashing. So that being said, there's definitely got to be something going on with that. So I'm going to go into my control panel and I'm going to open that. I believe I downloaded it on here. So um, I'm just going to go to programs and um, I want to see if I can just fix it there. Uh, MongoDB, I want to just hit repair. And see if this will repair the install because that's where my problem is either something in there is corrupted or who knows so that's where I'm at so uh, it 
as as I said before, um, you know, when you when you're trying to do things um, in development, um, you know, you're trying to go one path, and then sometimes you get sidetracked working something else because things happen, and uh, you know, with computers, you never know if it's your own computer or if it's the software that you're using. Um, something can be out of date. Um, you know, it's, it's it's hard to say for for certain exactly what's happening. So, um, you know, and it seems like this is running now. So, there we go. I think. Don't don't quote me just yet. Let's go in here and see if it'll let me connect. Up oh, there we go. Okay, cool. So it was a problem with the MongoDB. It wasn't my fault. For once. <laughs> So um, now where were we? I completely forgot. Okay, we were doing. We were working with this. I think this is still broken. Um, oh yeah, there's no server. Um, npm run dev. And I never saved my changes either. So um, there's that. But the thing I wanted to do was I wanted to um, send in something that we shouldn't have, and just make sure it, it throws that error. Um, so I'm going to change this to body and uh, I'm not sure if I'm logged in if I'm not logged in that may also be a problem yep uh, I'm not I don't have the authentication stuff um, put on this router just yet so um, we should be fine without authentication um, so let's go back over to postman and we're going to send that off and we should get that 400 and there we go so that's working now exactly how it's supposed to be and um, I think if I do this, I shouldn't get an error. I got an error last time because there was something wrong with the database. But we should be able to do this. Um, and I'm thinking it's because this user does not exist. Um, so the only way to verify that is to say, um, I think this is get users. I think it's supposed to be. Uh, what's this get a user? I think, okay, I have those misname. Um, so there we go, and I don't see anything matching the um, ID I was passing in. See, ID is ending with a two. I don't see any of that. So um, that tells me that so far so good. Everything's are you know things are airing out how they're supposed to. So let me just grab this ID and go back to this, and we're gonna change um, this thing here, and we're gonna click that button, and then we're going to send it off. It's working. We updated the email. Cool. So right now um, things are working, and then if we change it back to the well, I'm not gonna do that again. It's redundant. Um, so now we have that working. Um, now the next thing I said we had to do was we had to fix this because right now if I try to throw it in authentication, I'm almost certain we're gonna have a problem. So if I go down in here and I say const um, auth equals um, require. Require, and we're going to say another folder we want to go into um, middleware and we want to grab that auth that we created and um, we're going to drop that in between um, deleting patching and all that stuff but right now we're just going to work with where we are so we're going to just drop authentication right there and um, I think we're going to get a problem here because this find by ID and update is just going to short all of that and we'll see that in a second. Actually, it's not even going to let us pass. Actually, it should because I think we still have our previous login on there because I didn't expire the token. And um, by expire the token, I mean um, this thing here. Um, when we create our token, there's another pr um, value that we can have on here, and that's going to be in the options. Um, if I can find it again, here we go. So um, in the options, we have the option to say, hey, um, I don't want you to, I want you to sign out after a certain amount of time. Um, I don't know if you've ever been on like Facebook or something or Google and you go to log in and you know, after a while you never put your password in and then one day all of a sudden, boom, your password, um, you have to put your password in. And that's because your token timed out. And um, I'm gonna say JSON web token and uh, I just want to get to the docs for this so I can show you exactly what it is um, because I, I can't remember the name for the option that's really why um, so let's see is this no issuer here um, options here we go expires in that's what we're looking for 
and um, I think I have to pass the option as an object. So let's see. Um, sign in. Um, oh, I might just be able to put it in like that. Expires in, and I'll do the um, colon, and then I'll say mm, two days is good. And then I think I have to put this in as a string. So I'll say we're gonna expire this in two days. Actually, for for the time being, I'm gonna say three minutes. And I think it's, it should take the space. And the reason I'm saying three minutes, and yep, doesn't like it. So let me turn this into an object. Um, I just want to see the example here. Let me see if I do Control F expires in. Come on, I think I got an example with this thing. Here we go. So yep, got to be the little object type thing. So um, here we go. We're going to see expires in three minutes and um, we'll, we'll, you'll see in a second um, how that works Oop, if I can figure out how to get back to Postman so now we're back in Postman and um, I threw in some authorization I think we're still good for right now oh, we're on un unauthenticated so now we have to sign in so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna create um, not a create we're gonna sign in so we're gonna log in um, hopefully our user that we created is already there yeah, we're gonna log in with this user, and we are booted. Um, reason probably being is that um, does this user still exist? Um, actually, I'm just gonna create a new user. I don't, I don't feel like we're playing around with this. Um, I think. Oh, I changed the email on that user. That's what happened. Um, example at email.com. So we're gonna say um, example example at email.com and when we go to sign in, we're signed in. So now when I go back to um, update user, we should be good to go. There we go. So cool. And then in three minutes we shouldn't be able to do that. So um, while we're waiting for that, we're gonna go ahead and modify um, where was I looking for? Um, actually, this is a good time to show you the vulner the, the the thing I was talking about with the password, right? We um, right now, where is it? Let me close this post router so I don't get confused. And I'm also going to close this and this. So um, in the user router, you see this is the the one that I'm saying that it's going to bypass all that pre stuff that we had set up. And the way I'll show you guys that is I'm going to put the password in there. So I'm going to say we're going to change the password as well, and this should also be. Actually, I'm not going to. I'm going to just change this right here. I'm going to say password is going to be um, one, two, three, four, five, six, and um, when we send that off, we're getting something. Oh, this is new. So unexpected token in the JSON. There we go. So I didn't like the comma. And uh, when we look at the password, you see that it bypassed the hashing that we tried to put on our password. And the reason is because, like I said, this is a direct method on the database. It finds the user by the ID and then it updates it. It doesn't give you a chance to do the um gen the token I mean not the token generation I'm sorry it doesn't give you a chance to run this pre right here this pre operation so um only thing we have to do here is just change this um what's going on so um we have to say um find by ID and then we're gonna drop that off in there and um, we can take off this whole thing because the and the reason why we had to add this stuff on here was because we were making a direct operation in the database and uh, we wanted to make sure that when we did make those changes that we ran the validation that we had on our database as before and we also wanted to make sure that um, it used to find and modify well this this is another thing on it I, I don't know exactly what it is I just know I had to have it before 
So now we're going to change this thing, and now we want to change the um, the way we're finding our user. So I believe we have to change this to find one, and the reason for that is because we don't know um, the ID at this point. Right? Seems like we have the ID right here. So um, let me just change this actually. Control Z, thing. and we're gonna say, hey. You told me we're going to update, we're going to find by ID, so we find our user first, and then once we found our user, um, oh, I think I have to do it like this. Oh, no, I can just find by ID, it should just be straight up find by ID. Um, let me just verify. Yep, let me just put that straight in. Um, so now we're going to find our user by ID and I think we split this off into another you're supposed to split this into three um, lines this one line and um, forgive me for um, you know the constant back and forth of this stuff so now what we want to do is we're going to say for each update that we wanted to do updates dot for each so now we're gonna so now what we're doing is we're applying our updates manually and the reason why we're doing it manually is again we want to make sure that it goes back through all of the validation that we have set on it and um, by doing that we make it a whole lot easier to work with our data because now when we go to save it it's gonna run those validation stuff it's gonna run the validation and everything as before so um, we're saying okay we're dot for each and now we're going to say um, you can call it change you can, you can really call this whatever you want um, I just like to make sure that the stuff that I put in here makes sense so that way uh, whoever has to come back and read this can understand what I'm talking about so now we're going to say alright for each update we're going to do uh, I'm actually going to split this to another um, so I'm going to say user and since we don't know which property um, we're updating, we don't know if this is the name, email, or the password. So with the way we, we're going to get access to this is we're just going to say update. And this allows us to say, hey, I don't know um, whatever property this is referring to. We're going to connect. We're going to tap into that property, and we're going to update that specific property with um, a with the value given through here and you're going to do the same thing on the on the body so when you have an object you can use this notation here to say hey we're going to update a property by this name so let's say um, if it was like if this was if this was instead of update let's say this was name and I think it'll be a string so if we were like hey we're going to update it with um, we're going to update the username with the whatever value is held in the um, name property on the body um, so that's what that is and that's how that works um, so now we've updated our use our, our properties and now we have to save this so now we're going to say we're going to oh, um, we're going to drop this down into here so again um, that's probably I don't think I needed this because what happened is if um, might have to move this up. Can't remember if I needed this or not. Um, I want to keep it for right now because it says, "Hey, we're gonna wait, looking for that user. If we can't find that user, then we're gonna throw that error. Otherwise, we're gonna go through and run these updates, and um, you know that should be fine. But um, I think the reason why I don't need this is because when we run off." We already know who our user is, um, and it's like request dot user, because um, but in this particular case, we're not working with. Well, this can be any user, so that's why I'm going to keep it. That's why. Um, and how I forget how we're sending this ID in. Oh yeah, this this thing here. So we're looking for this specific user. We've already authenticated with who we are. And um, so I'm going to keep that to be how it was. And then we're going to say uh, if the user exists, we're going to run these updates, and then we're going to save it. So now we have to say await. Um, 
user dot save and now we've saved our user oh, if I can spell so now we're saving our user and then we're going to send that back to um, whoever um, so now we're going to save that and now when I come in and look at this in Postman I'm just going to fire off the same thing and as you see as I told you guys before that our token has expired and because that token expired we now have to go back and log in uh, again so here we go let's log in and I'm, I'm going to keep this here and um, for one it's going to remind me that I have to log in and um, I don't know what's happening here oh yeah we changed the password um, password is one two three four five I think we went to six um, Yeah, it is one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, too far. Um, wait, where's the login? Here we go. Login's here. Um, example. At, um, I'm not. I don't have any hanging commas. Mm, oh, maybe the password's the same. So maybe that's what the problem was. All right, we're getting a bad request. I think because it can't find that. Well, no, this is the login router. Our login router sends us a problem. Um, if um, so, let's just go up to user. I'm going to check this login thing. If we get that 400, if so, something in here is going botchy. And we're looking for the name, password, and I don't have time for this. So I'm just going to look up another user in the in the database, and we're going to use that user's information. So the one sneaking here without validation so I think these um, run back to the same thing so I think they all have this we'll start at will22 at example.com so um, now we're going to try to log in with this one so I'm going to do will22 at example.com and I think the password is testing123 And we're able to get in, so there we go. So now uh, we're going to update the user, and we're logged in. So look at that. And you see all these tokens that we have now. So um, we just keep piling up this list of tokens. So um, that is fine. And you see this V7. I guess this is just amount of updates that we're making. Who knows? Um, but yeah. So now you can see how things are are working here. And uh, I need to take out one of these console logs. So that's what we're seeing down here in the blue. We're still logging something. And I think this is back in the middleware for our auth.js. Uh, yep, here it is here. We were printing out our header. And uh, I'm just going to save that so it's gone. And um, so now we've fixed our user router um, to. Um, up to make sure that whatever we update is only going to be stuff that we said is available for update and then we have the rest of our code to save our user um, I'm going to go ahead and add this authorization to um, deleting and um, honestly you shouldn't even be able to get a user without being authorized um, hopefully it doesn't shoot me in the foot <laughs> um, because I don't remember my users um, because I don't want anybody seeing who's in my in my database unless you're me. So you should be able to be able to create and do that. Um, I'm thinking about it as well to say, hey, if somebody is trying to create a user, I want to be notified and I want to be able to reject it or accept or reject it. But I mean, I'm not gonna have a sign up button into on my database on my stuff, so should be fine for now but just trying to fine tune and make something that is kind of more expandable for other people because I can you know build this blog from you know for me have my own personal excuse me website and then I might want to use the same code or at least the same code base to do a project for somebody else with um, some modification so um, that's just something to keep in the back of the noggin um, so moving forward let's go ahead and look at 
I almost forgot what I said we were going to do today. Um, I believe we're supposed to be clean. Oh, actually, before I do that, let's go ahead and clean up the rest of this stuff. Um, but I want to jump back to my agenda for today because I'm almost lost. Um, oh, yeah, hiding the data. So um, we need to hide some data that we pass to the user because right now, when we're in Postman, we can see the password that we send back to our user. And actually, let me run this again before it times out. Hopefully, it didn't already. Um, yep, we timed out. So let me go back and log in. And I'm going to change this soon, but just not yet. <laughs> um, so let me hurry and do this. Uh, I'm going to change that. And now you see our password is hashed. Um, but now we want to make sure we don't even want to send this or our tokens back because all thing we're doing is we're giving people um, the ability to see what tokens are usable and still active on our current user and we don't want that to happen so um, another thing that we want to do and um, I believe it's on our um, we're going to actually create another method and that's going to say that's going to be on this object like how we have here and I believe that exists on the user model so we want to say hey when you send stuff back to people you need to remove some information from that before you send it and this just makes our code more secure it just makes our data more secure so now we're going to say um, user schema dot methods dot and um, what I want to call it I want to say um, what should I call this um, if you're in the chat you can drop me some some tips if I um, can't find a name for something um, definitely want to make this an interactive kind of thing so if you have um, questions inputs or anything like that feel free to use the chat and uh, if you don't know what the chat is I'm just gonna send something in the chat so um, I can see if this actually works and uh, if you're here just just say uh, just drop a line and say what's up what's up um, so user schema dot methods dot I guess I'll call this um, public um, public data I said say public user um, yeah that's fine um, it kind of gets the job done and then um, we want to use this function thing and we want to make sure it's an asynchronous function as always async function and this is how we grab our this um, reference. So now I'm going to say const user equals this. And now we can say um, we want to remove some fields from our user. Um, and before we jump into that, I just forget um, which fields we're removing. Um, and actually, no, I know what it is. Um, so actually, that's not what we want to say. We want to say um, const user object because we want to turn our user we want to take the user that we have and we want to make it into an object so we can pick what we want because if we work with the user object as it stands now we um, we're gonna send all this back and that's not what we want to do so we're creating a new object in here and we're gonna say um, this is gonna be <clears throat> excuse me um, this is gonna be user I think it's this dot to object uh, how do you get this um, object dot to object um, how do you do this thing um, 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 let me go here go back and I want to say um, we're doing JavaScript so I'm going to say JavaScript to object because I always forget how to do stuff so um Say um, to object JavaScript. There we go. This is what I'm looking for. So I mm, they make it very difficult. Collection dot to object. What if I wanted to do a object dot to object? So I might be able to just do that. So I'm just gonna say this dot to object. 
and um, I'm just gonna console log this to be sure. So I'm gonna say console dot log um, this dot to or this should just be user object. And this way I can just make sure that um, actually I think it isn't. This is what I need to do. There we go. So create an empty object first because we don't really, we don't have anything in there. And then we're gonna say um, const user equals this. And then now we're gonna say um, here we go. Um, we're gonna say um, delete. Um, user dot password and that removes the password and then we want to delete the user dot tokens so we want to delete that whole tokens um, array so that doesn't get exposed either and then we want to return um, oh geez um, okay I'm, 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 I'm drawing blanks so um, I'm actually going to go back here because I know it'll be easier to find it. So, and um, I'll drop links to this course because this is um, you know how I'm doing everything. Any um, but I'm adding my own player onto it, for so to um, you won't see things um, here exactly as I'm as I'm doing it. Um, but it'll, but doing this, you'll get, you'll be able to follow along with everything that I'm doing. Um, let's see, where is it? There we go. Okay, so I did have the re order reversed. Um, and um, we're not even gonna have to do anything now that I think about this. Um, we're actually gonna change it to say um, that to JSON. And the reason that is, is because um, as you know, all the data that we send back is in JSON, JSON format. So, um, we're going to tap into this dot to JSON by saying, once you, once the data is converted to a JSON object, it's not going to have any of this on there, and that makes it easier for us because we don't have to go through each and every user model or anywhere we're returning a user. We don't have to change any of that. Um, we already have it here. So um, what we're going to do is wait. Why is uh, I think I was messing with the wrong. Yep, I was messing with the wrong um, function. So we're going to change this one and it's going to do JSON. And then um, flip this. And then I believe it's return um, user dot, uh, return user object. There we go. So that's what it is. The user object is this new thing here. Um, user object. Uh, user dot two object. There we go. That should do it. And I'm just gonna verify one more time because my short term memory is terrible. Um, so this is gonna actually be user object. And the reason being is you didn't like if you deleted it off the user directly, then it's gone. So um, that was something I probably should have caught beforehand. But you know, can't remember everything. So I'm gonna turn this user object. And um, now we shouldn't even have to change anything on the other side of our code. So we're just going to log in again, and that should actually um, send the data back to us. And ooh, oh, we did something. I did something. What did I do? Oh, wait. Actually, no, the user object is empty. I wonder where that is. Let's go somewhere else and see. Let's say we're gonna get the user. And um, yeah, it's not sending us anything. Oh, excuse the neighborhood. Um, hmm. Because we didn't change the user itself, and I wonder if um, the router is here. So let's go back to um, update user, and this time I'm, not, I'm, I'm done changing the password because I forget stuff, so we're just going to change the name, and we're just going to say test dummy, and we're going to 
gonna send that one off. And again, we're getting that empty object. So um, I think something is going um, astray in um, this thing here. And the problem is figuring out what. So I'm gonna start here to make sure that the user is fine when it comes in, which it should. So um, we took that and then we send test dummy off again. Oh, give it a second. Yep, maybe not. So let's say over here we're gonna get user. All right, let me take these, delete all. Actually, let me check the database, make sure I didn't screw that up. So it looks good here. I'm just gonna re execute again while everything's open. Yep, email, password, tokens, all there. So um, just the way I'm sending it back is what's having the problem. And um, let's see. And yep, there goes our user down there. So that is fine. So when I return this um, user object, it should also be fine. Because the only thing I should be changing is the tokens and the user object. As the response. And I just want to see something. Now with this in place, we can head back over to post data we actually want to share with because a way that to get the job done. There. And it's manual. And actually, I'm going to jump a little further because the part that I was getting to is actually over here. So in order to do this, we don't have to change anything in our code. I think I went too far. Um, yeah, I went too far. So I've, there's no shame in my game showing you, you know, this process authentically. So still on the index.js file there, but um, user schema dot methods. Did I do methods or did I do static? Yeah. Dot to JSON. Yep. Uh, and I think I put in async. Explicitly calling it. Doesn't need to be async. To figure this out, over. So let me pull that off and see if that somehow screwed anything up. Oh, I see. It's like here. And um, pulling that and saving that. Let's see if uh, that screwed anything up. And then we'll, we'll have the object printed out as well. So let's go here, send that over out. We need to authenticate, so we're going to log in, fire that off. We're in, and look at that. Update user, that's dummy. We're in, look at that. Our tokens aren't coming in, and neither is our. So this was, and this is the, actually the original one because now that we, we know our stuff is firing, look at this. This is the original stuff that was there, and we took all that off. So that is fine. And actually, I don't know what happened. Maybe I was working with the older thing, and it just didn't update um, for some reason. Or actually, it was the async. The async is what screwed it up. Um, I guess it, it thought I had to wait for something, and then when there was no await or something, that probably screwed it up. So there we go. Now we removed our tokens and we removed our password. And um, this is going to be another gray area for me. And I say gray area because it's like, yeah, i seen it. I did it once. But now I want to do this by my own specific, um, what's what I'm looking for? I want to have this for my specific needs. Um, and just to kind of remind you guys um, how we're doing this. Um, I'm going to jump back and go to my um, design for my website and show you guys um, where we're going with that. And um, now that I, I think about it, you know, I, I get to coding. Um, the design isn't fully, fully done, but um, I'd say it's about 80% there. I can say 80% in full confidence. So I'll say it's about 80% there in terms of what's needed. Um, you know, I didn't have the user stuff in there. But um, you know, you create a dashboard and you, you can manage enough stuff there. So um, that's not really a big deal.
um, but in terms of what is going to be delivered and what's there, um, that is all good, um, with some minor exceptions for um, some of the stuff that we're going to cover um, actually in the next few minutes. Um, I'm not going to wait for that. I'm just going to do something else and come back to it. Hopefully, it'll be um, there and not in a bad mood. And I actually want to clear my terminal. Uh, it won't let me do it while it's running. So. I like a pretty clear terminal that way if anything pops up I know it's the most recent information otherwise I have no idea of knowing so um, I believe we <clears throat> we were at the part of adding this authorization everywhere um, I'm gonna go through the project router and throw that in as well um, and I shouldn't be removing anything from the project so I think that's good okay, deleted something. Authorized to update it, you're, you're fine to get it, anybody can get it, but to create it, you also need to be authorized. So, we're going to fix that. And um, now we have to tell it what that even means. So, we're going to con not console, we're going to say const um, off equals require oops, equals require, and on that require, we're going to say dot dot slash. And we want our middleware and we want that authorization that we um, worked so hard to create. And um, let me also check the post router to make sure this has it as well. It seems like I already put it there in some places. Um, authorize. Um, anybody can get posts. Um, there we go. And that looks good. So um, now what I want to do is. Actually, I'll, I'll give you something um, to kind of chew on, and this will actually help me to go into this without um, fully finishing the stuff I was looking at. So let's look at the request, uh, HTT, um, HTTP um, request um, object. Let me see express. I'm going to do express. And the reason why I'm doing express is because I want to see what um, methods are on it. And not necessarily methods, but what you have access to, because there are some things called. Um, let's see, if it's um, what is it? Um, so I'm tipping my tongue. So if you want to filter data, right? I want to see if they have a queries thing on here. Uh, let's just do request dot query and see where that takes us. Here we go. So um, remember when you're in Google, right? And you see this question mark with the Q. That is your query. And in this point, it's just like um, you can define it to be whatever you want. Um, but in this case, it's a Q. If you were on NPM, um, I guess they just create an individual web page for each package that is there. So um, you don't see a query here unless we say, I'm just typing node. And then you see that there, you have the question mark and it's node. Um, if you go, let's say, something else you can search. Um, let's go with Pinterest. So I'm going to Pinterest.com. And I don't have anything crazy here, so you should be good to go. Um, all right, it's taking too long, so we're not gonna we're not gonna do it. You get the point. Um, so now we're gonna go and we're gonna play around with that. And um, I really want to get this um, queries thing up and running because I can't remember if it's query or queries. Um, so I'm just put query. And uh, oh, here we go. Is this it? property so um, we'll have access to our query and um, what that means is that we can pick and choose what kind of data we want to come back so um, we'll be able to go through our database and we can filter our um, our response and here we go request dot query I knew it was coming there we go so, um, and you see it here, right? So if you put a, 
let's say right right now in our database um, let's just get all the posts so let's look at all of the posts we'll say get all projects apparently projects are more important is there first um, there's only one right now so and that's even that's fine even though there's only one because what we can do is we have this type right so we're gonna say um, so eh, I think the query is when you're looking for something very in particular uh, we want something more like um, filtering uh, but that's okay um, we have access to this thing called the request dot query so let me go over and I'm gonna close these now because we're gonna work back on the post router um, on the post router we're able to tap into these gets and on these gets we can do a little bit more so um, let's do it on this one so here we're gonna find a specific post right we're finding all posts we don't really want to do that so what we can do is we can say request dot actually I'm just gonna show you how this works so let's just go request dot um, query and you see that there look at that and um, let's just console log it for right now console dot log request dot query and um, I'll, I'll console log it there and then we're gonna go over here and where's this let's post and view projects actually it's already there so uh, I didn't save it control C any year now there we go um, project router and we get we have to get all projects so we're gonna write the same thing we just did console.log um, request.query and um, now I'm gonna save this and um, it's the first time doing this freestyle so just bear with me um, I want to say query equals and I believe this is um, something very specific so um, so look here right you have um, your specific thing that you're looking for so you can put in here if you're looking for something so maybe you're looking for a very specific so this may this is good for search um, that's what I was trying to get to so if you're searching for something right let's say we're searching for a post by a specific name so then we'll say um, back in here we'll say um, this is my I think I put this in here raw phrasing this is I think in you have to capture your space like this this is plus my plus first was project I believe that's the way you handle uh, empty space uh, let me just check the internet and verify that um, Google is a very good place to check this so I'm gonna head there put space there and a space here and then run that search save oop here we go see it's all the way down here yep plus so now I'm just gonna run this and you see we still got our information back and there's nothing wrong when we changed our URL so now we get to look over here and now we get to see look at this we get our query object that we're looking for and it kept track of our spaces so now if we wanted to look up and now this you know this could be different if you were looking up ID but ID is going to be really good for me as um, an admin you know working with my code on the front end I might want to use those IDs as opposed to titles because those IDs are unique titles you know may or may not be used um, you know the same way so that's really that and um, 
so now you, you see how, how this the hell this is working out um, so now we'll eventually have the option to say hey you can either get a post by its I am a project by its ID or you can make a very specific request and now you can kind of change the way that you're gonna receive it so um, because otherwise you just get all of the excuse me you just get all of the posts here of the projects here and um, if there's 10,000 projects you might want to have a little bit more control over that um, another reason being say um, you want to say you only want the, the first 10 um, or the, or the um, posts in a specific category um, that's what all this is going to allow us to do and um, I believe there's actually more on this so let me see if I can just get here quick um, we already know about params and we already know about these things so um, and oh we can see it here from the side so that makes it easier to sort uh, in case I'm missing anything um, doesn't seem that I am so that's good um, so yeah the, um, we're going to work with this thing a little bit more and now you get to see um, a lot more um, optioning going on in here because now we can start to put these things um, together so now we can also say um, on top of this we can say hey I want to get my first project or I can say I want to say maybe we're searching for something with art in testing so now you have art and oh, I don't need those codes art and we want to say sort it sort by and we can say ASC and I'm not sure if this will work um, just and the reason why and what I mean by work I mean I don't know um, how that is going to translate up here but you see all of these ands that's what they do they help you fill they help you um, differentiate between each query so um, let's just go ahead and run it and you'll see what I mean so now when we go down in here you see there's another query and um, this is actually um, not I don't, I don't think this is oh yeah this is the new query and you see you see your first query is what you're searching for and now we have a search sort by so now we, we can control what um, parameters users are able to um, use to say okay if you give me 10,000 users I want to choose to sort it by a certain number and then um, let's do something else because uh, I forget exactly how this works but um, we can do an example and um, there is a way for you to say okay I only want a certain number of stuff to show per page and I think the way I'm going to get that done is through Amazon and um, on here let's just go to bestsellers and you see how things are going right they're giving us the, the query this is what we're going for and we can if we change this we get different stuff and um, right now we're going to say electronics and you see how this thing is changing and um, that's what we want um, so um, as you can see this stuff here is going to be controlled on our client side and you just have your back end to and you, you your clients gonna your client side code which is all this stuff here that you see and can touch is gonna be what um, communicates with our um, user side and um, I think I might be able to get down into the comment section and change that um, so let me see if I can get down into reviews and on the reviews I may have the opportunity to do this um, I'm kind of winging this part here so um, forgive me um, but now we're down here into reviews so now I want you to look up here and just try to look for anything changing so we really don't have to start looking here so if anything changes there we'll see it so now we see a little more right and um, so maybe they must be using some kind of other um, functionality to control that which makes sense um, but um, I'm kind of tempted to go somewhere else let's go to Nike and um, I'm almost certain you should get it here uh, we're gonna go to men we're gonna 
just look at shoes and then let's look at some uh, let's go with pants and tights I guess um, who cares um, so now we've got apparently not Jeez, how do you even work this website let's just go to shoes let's go to all shoes right we're gonna go to all shoes and doing so will open up the queries of allowance and allowance so right now there's no queries being made because we're just doing everything so now we're gonna click on this sort by and we're gonna say we're gonna sort by low to high and you see here you already see the sort changing so now if we were to go and we were to filter some stuff we can add that on as well so now we're gonna click on a filter uh, filters so forth oh okay so now let's say we filter it by boys you see um, well actually that's not that was unexpected but um, let's see if I change the color and if that does something different um, so it seems like they have their their website built out a little differently for filtering um, but you get the point I mean the real point at least we got the one takeaway with this um, price sorting so um, if we wanted to do that um, we have to look at sorting and the way we'll look at sorting um, I believe we have to go into the Mongo stocks for that so um, let's go over to the Mongo stocks and we'll look at that so let's say this is it uh, read the docs and we're going to look at sorting I see anything yeah let's type in sorting and here we go we have a sort and not getting the let's do this <clears throat> excuse me so marks the actually this <coughs> excuse me um, this isn't the one we're looking for let's try this one I think this is the one we want because it's making a query so yeah this is the one we want so now we go here and we can actually sort what we want um, so now set the sort order if an object is passed allows values um, are ascending descending or you can put it out in long you can use long versions so um, what will happen is we're going to say if a string is passed it must be a space delimited list of path names and with a sort order uh, matching one of those so let's say let's try this out um, and I'm not like I said, again this is going to be some uncharted territory for me so um, bear with me um, there's probably a better way to do this where um, you'll pretty much say you're going to map out all of these things here and you're going to want to tack that on to the end of your request and um, honestly I haven't really gotten there so it's not too fresh on my mind um, but I think there's another thing for me to do here to touch things up actually we can we can always have a search option so even though when you get these right and we have a request.query we can store a constant in here and um, actually on this dot find you have uh, a little bit more stuff that we can do we can say um, actually let me just go to the docs um, probably not easier to read but um, it does make the explanation easier to exp to give um, and I think um, I forget the full name that I'm looking for so I'm hoping that this will help me um, populate there we go um, this is the one I'm looking for either and um, this whole I was looking for um, something in order to add into what I'm looking um, what, this what I'm looking for. So um, I wanted to add the search stuff into our lookup. 
And um, I think we have to look at these um, queries here. I think that's the queries. Nope. Looks like here, the API query. And that's where we were when we looked at the sorting stuff. So um, I'm almost certain we would use this um, dot sort in some kind of way, um, like how we have here. So let's just say we go here and we're going to say in this find object, we can throw in some conditions or have our callback. Um, I'm just going to jump right into it and see if I can um, decipher this um, for the last few minutes of this. Um, either that or I just drop a dot sort on that. So it would be like, hey, um, oh, we lost it. So we'll say um, if um, let's say request dot query, and if I'm wrong, I'll, I'll clear this up tomorrow. Request dot query um, dot sort by. So now we're saying if we have a sort by, we're gonna do a um, projects dot and I should have that same sort on here so now we actually get to sort it by the thing that we're gonna send in so if we say sort by we're gonna just put that right in there we're gonna just say um, request dot query dot and actually I want to see if something if I do this I'm gonna say sort um, actually that won't work because we're Hmm. Um, let's see to test this out. Let's just say um, ASC and C. And actually, we have to say what we're sorting by. So we're going to say um, type or title. By sending, descending, whatever, right? So let's go. And we're going to save that. And um, again, I'm not too sure how this thing works. Um, didn't like what I had there for the find. But where am I? Oh, here we go. Um, didn't like that. Let me just take this out and see what happens. Oh, I see. So we had extra cost right there that was empty. Run that. Okay, we're good. Um, so we're still gonna have our thing. Let's just see what happens. So we got an error, and it's probably because what I tried to do on the database. Um, so that didn't work, and I think it's because it's it's supposed to be type. Yep. So we're still having some errors there, and. Um, Let's say, let's try this A to Z. Um, oops. Yeah, as I have it being done the same way here, and then even over here, yep. And test ascending. Yeah, I'm not sure how that one works, but um, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna introduce you guys to um, something called GitHub, and um, that'll be a good place to draw the line here rather than you know show you guys the wrong way and then have to correct it tomorrow. So um, we take the I'll leave that in there for now since we know what we had. So we're gonna save this and I'm gonna drop the server and um, clear the command terminal, and I'm gonna show you guys where we can actually store our code. So that way we can code on multiple machines or different platforms, you know, whatever, right? Um, you might want to, or you might just want to have a place um, to store your code in case something happens to your computer. Um, let's say, you know, computer dies, it breaks, you know, your cousin pours Kool-Aid on it, whatever. Um, you just want to have an, op an option to um, save your data somewhere else. Um, so now these are other applications that I've worked on. Um, so um, we're going to create a new repo, and if you haven't signed up, um, it's pretty. It's a fairly easy process. I'm not really going to go through that. So um, you can go here, click new, 
and then I'm going to give it a name and I'm going to give it a name um, probably already had the name taken yep there so I'm actually going to go ahead and delete this one because I don't want the duplication so let's go ahead and delete this and it's going to be all the way down here and I need to just put the name in and it should be fine there we go so now the new repo and it's going to be literally the same thing so we're going to say williamennels.com I'm going to say uh, my um, my website my, mm, my personal website um, and for right now I'll let it be a private repo so you can choose to make it public um, so other people can see your code if you want to share stuff um, actually I'm open to have it I mean it can be public and it doesn't really matter there's a lot of stuff that's public right now um, and I don't want to do this and I don't want to add any get ignore at the moment and you can add licenses and stuff like that if you had a license but um, I don't need one um, so then we're just gonna hit create repository and now we have a place where we can store our code and um, what you see here is I don't think I have git on my computer let's see I'm gonna type this and see what happens yep so um, I do have git installed on my computer um, if you don't and you are a Windows user um, you pretty much if you just Google git you'll be taken somewhere here and then you go here um, you click on the git dot dash scm website and you'll be able to download git and get it installed on your computer um, if you're a Mac um, same concept and if you're Linux same concept um, you might just be it might already be installed if you're Linux I mean if you're Linux um, so that's that and I don't recommend the GUI but if it helps you then cool use it and you can see it's a very popular thing because Google uses it, Android uses it, Linux uses it, Facebook, Microsoft, Ruby on Rails, I don't know what that is, Twitter, LinkedIn, Genome, Eclipse, Netflix, I don't know what that is, and Postgres. So um, all these are the people that use this um, software. And um, I believe it was actually acquired by Microsoft. So um, there may be some changes coming um, along the way. So um, let's go back here and we're just going to follow this thing here. So we're going to go ahead and say um, git init and that actually creates, um, this tells, um, you see everything lit up green. So that's start, that, that initialize the repository and allows us to start doing some stuff. And um, what it does is it starts to track all of your changes. Um, so if I delete something from here, it'll now be tracked. And um, let's say I have it up and put it up into GitHub, and I want to go and let's say I introduce something that breaks my code, I can go back down to the previous version and have a fresh link without having to worry about. Um, well, actually, there's no way you can do it before. So um, I'm not going to add the README just yet because I don't have one. So um, what I want to do, I'm just going to show you. There's a way you can get the status of your code, and this is going to show you any modifications or changes you've made since you've created it, or since the last commit. And you'll see what a commit is in a second. So this is all the stuff that is tracking. You're saying you got this folder, that file, this folder, that folder, that folder, blah blah blah, right? Um, but actually, um, let's take a step back because I want to create something called a git ignore. And what that is, it's going to be a file that tells um, Git not to look at certain stuff. Um, so if you do Git ignore, I want to say I don't want you looking at my node modules. And the reason being that this is really, really bulky stuff. And um, your code, you don't want to put that into your turn. You don't want to put that in your GitHub because it's real bulky. And um, you know, you, nobody, nobody needs to see that because there's a very simple way they can get all of the dependencies that you have here, and um, it's called npm install. So it'll install all of the stuff that you have here 
at these specific versions so you'll have literally the same exact thing going on there so um, that's kind of that in a nutshell and um, if you want me to elaborate more on that I could probably do a separate thing once I'm done with the series so just go ahead and ask me about that um, so here we go let's say we want it to ignore node underscore actually I, need, I have to do a slash and tell it that's a folder so slash node underscore modules and if I've done this correctly it should actually turn gray when I this node modules folder uh, this folder should turn gray so if it doesn't yep there we go so now that it's gray and I do this again I look at the status the node module shouldn't even be in there uh, and yep look at that get ignore database index.js middleware modules package lock json package at json and routers so node modules is no longer being tracked um the package.lock.json i don't know if i need to send this as well but this just gives it a lot more information about the stuff that's going on so for instance body parser the thing that we use to allow our um, express to use JSON and well actually this is what allows us to interpret um, information from the request body this re requires some other stuff so that's what that is um, and then it has some um, it requires some stuff and has some dependencies on some other things um, and you can see through here this list is pretty big so I'm not going to dive through everything because I don't know what everything is. Um, I don't think I need to say um, get ignore. Um, let's say do you need to send. Um, I will almost assume the answer is yes to this, but uh, I'm just doing this for the sake of education here. Um, GitHub. There we go. Um, do I commit? Yes, package is intended to be checked into the source control. You should commit this file. And look at that, you got their help, so it'll tell us. So, package is automatically generated for any operations where it modifies the node modules or package.json. So, that's really like the headquarters for your node modules and your package.json. And that is keeping track of all the stuff. So, look at that. It tells you what was happening, what was generated. Um, there we go. So we definitely need to keep that. So uh, I'm gonna do git. Um, I'm gonna show you two things. I'm gonna say git add, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna click right here and double click this, and then I'm gonna cl click the um, scroll button on my mouse. Oh, that only works on Linux. Okay. Um, dot git ignore, and I use tab to complete that. So um, that should be available on Linux. Um, I'm using Windows, and it's definitely it should be available on Mac as well. So git add dot git ignore. So now this um, git ignore should turn. Um, it's it should be disappeared, but we'll see it down here when I run git status again, and we'll see that the status on that has changed. It's green. New file that it is now able to track. So all these files are not being tracked right now. Um, because it's not aware of them, so you have to add the file. So I'm just going to do git add dot, which adds everything else. And now if I hit git um, status, right? Um, I hope that's not a problem. Okay, um, git status, and now look at that. In our git status, everything is now green, meaning it is tr now able to track it so now we're gonna do a commit and before that I think there is something else we have to do um, we have to yep, do our commit method and then we have to connect our terminal so this is gonna sound a little crazy right because now we're gonna go right from this terminal here and we're gonna make a connection to this data to this um, repo which is just another word for directory so just think a folder like this um, just think of GitHub as like one really big, complicated thing, like your your file directory. Um, so now we're gonna do our commit. So um, each commit has to have a message. 
So commit is kind of like, think of it like a permanent save. Think of, yeah, think of it like a saving. So this right here just says, hey, you are now being tracked. But when you commit it, it's like hitting the save button and it saves all your changes um, locally. So right now, in your on your computer itself, your physical computer, you can you should be able to go through and see all the different changes um, that you make. Um, and the in as long as you're in this directory, you should be able to see all your changes. So we're gonna say git dash m, and then we're gonna say um, uh, we're gonna say this is the initial commit initial commit, um, and it's gonna say um authentication um this is where so far and usually you want to when you do your commit message you want it to be something that helps you later to understand what happened in this um commit and this one in particular we're saying initial commit so this is saying this is your starting point um and you can you know phrase it however you want um, this is just something I try to do for myself because, um, again, my memory isn't great. So I want to say um, the initial commit. Initial commit is really fine because it just says, hey, this is what you have. So it's no point in saying because nothing changed because this is the first one. So um, it has to have a message and it has to look like this. So that dash M tells it that, hey, where it comes after this is going to be the message. So we do that. Um, and now it's saved all of our stuff. And then what that does is it gives us this option to log in. And now we, remember I was telling you we have to see we can see all the changes. And there we go. We can now see that. And um, this stuff you'll you'll probably want to learn a little later. But this is the way that it, this is something that um, Git uses to track changes and give you different information on what's different between stuff and all of that. Um, that's a little bit more complex. And uh, I'm just going to skip over that. Um, this here is actually um, something that you can do through git um, config and this is just a configuration to say hey this is who I am and you do dash g because it says global so it's like why don't you install git and you're anywhere in your computer whether you create another project or this project you want to you want it to know who you are so you can say user dot name to say hey this is who I am and that may or may not be wrong so um, you might want to look into that but um, that's how you set up your name and email so that way it, it can look something like this when you're done otherwise it'll just say unknown um, and actually um, I'll do you guys a favor and I'll look it up because I have time to kill uh, get config um, dash g and I'll say user dot name so that's what I tried um, oh I was close it's dash dash global So um, that's that. So you can change it. I'm not going to change mine. Um, so now you can say git. Uh, I think you have to do add remote. Um, let me say I don't do this often. So oh, remote add. So actually, I'm just just, just going to copy this because this um, right here, you see this dot git. So this is how. But this is this is telling you that this is a file really that you're downloading from the internet. Um, you can download this file from the internet, and it's going to be it's going to track all your changes. So um, now we're just going to paste that in there. Control Shift V. Um, it might be Command Shift V if you have a Shift button on Mac or Linux. Um, if you have Linux, you actually can just um, click your center uh, mouse button and drop that in there. And then we're going to click that. Well, enter on that. And now, when I say git, um, is it? Um, I still need to look at branches. So now we're gonna say branch. Um, before, I, um, and the reason being is, um, right now, right, the default of what this does is it creates a branch called master. And um, I'll push the master right now, but um, as you'll see when we. Um, proceed through the rest of the code. Uh, I'm going to create another branch, and just think of it as two different, two separate folders. One's going to be master, and that's going to be all the code that's good to go and it works. Then I'm going to create a branch called dev, and the reason why I'm creating that dev branch is because if I change my code, or let's say my code goes live, I don't, you know, my code's up in the internet. 
I don't want to push something to my code and it breaks and I wasn't aware. So I always want to make sure that um, I have more control. So I'm going to create another branch to do that. But before I do that, I'm going to just do this. And um, this dash U just means upstream. Um, I'm still not too, I'm not 100% sure on what that does, but it's something to deal with um, the way Git works internally on managing your stuff. So now we're saying we're going to push that up to origin master. And when we do this, it's going to push directly onto that master branch. So now, if I, and you see this here, you created a new branch. Your new branch is master. So it already has a name for it. So you could have really named this anything, and that would have been it. But it's just kind of nice to keep it the default to master. Um, because if you create another branch called master, and it's not the master, <laughs> if that makes sense, um, then you can run into problems where you don't know what is your default branch. Um, and usually the master code will be when your code goes live is that'll be you know the place that you store your code that goes live so let's say you do have code that um, you finished and you want to pull that over you can merge that into your code that already exists after you verify that it works that way you don't break your website while it's, it's live so um, now that we have that in there but we can go ahead and I'm going to show you if we refresh this look at that this is everything that we've done that we've done so far and you see it was done five minutes ago and you see we pushed it like 30 seconds ago but this is based on the time that we committed our stuff so that's really cool and as what I was saying here branches right default branch master you see it's there um, we can do something else and we can create another branch so let's go ahead and create that branch now I'm gonna call it dev and now if I go into dev it's going to be empty and the reason being is because so now yeah the reason being is because there's nothing there so we can just go get branch and we want to see which branch we're working on and right now we're working on master and we don't want to do that so let's say get um, fetch so now we want to fetch um, any changes that we've done in whether it's on GitHub, whatever, right? We want to make sure we're reconnecting, we're reestablishing that connection to our um, virtual, um, how do you say this? The uh, repository, remote repository. And we want to say, hey, did anything change? Did anybody create a new branch? Did anybody change code and push it up? That was, and I didn't, I don't know. Let's say you're working in a team of five guys. Let's say your friend pushed code at midnight and you know you wake up at eight o'clock in the morning and you want to see if anything's been changed. So now when you do that, hey, you created a new branch, dev. So now we're going to say, let's check that thing out. So we're going to say git checkout um, origin, uh, but let's me origin slash dev. And I want you to take a really good look over here and what happens when I do this. Uh, something happened. Oh, here we go. You are in detached head state. You can look around, make experimental changes, um, commit them, and you can disarm any commits you make in this stage. If you want to create a new branch to retain commits, you create commit on. So that is actually not what I wanted to do. So, uh, or I did this operation with git switch. So let's go ahead and switch because I don't know what the heck just happened. Git switch, and I think I need that. Let's spell that wrong. So now we're back on origin master. Um, I'm gonna say git checkout. Let me try this again. Uh, so I created this new branch, but the problem is it has nothing in there. Um, I think when I created it, I should have pulled in the um, the latest. <coughs> um, but there's something we can do over here, and we can actually connect it to our master branch. Um, and we'll see this in a second. Let's see. First, I have to remember, remember how to do this. Um, create a filter for request. Uh, I think I'm supposed to base. I think when I created this, actually, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and delete this branch. Um, you'll see in a second. Um, why I want to do this. No, I, here we go. Two branches. There we go. So now, 
Okay, so now I want this thing to, I think the new pull request is what I need. Um, so we can compare changes between dev and master. There's supposed to be a merge button in here. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking to see if there's a way I can merge the stuff in there. Oh, they're identical. Okay, so that's great. So why is it that I do get checkout dev? Ooh, that's not even, I don't even know what that is. There we go. So that's what I need to do. So I think when I did that origin slash dev, it did something weird. So um, get branch. So now I have that branch there. Um, branch dev set up to track remote uh, branch dev from organ. Okay, cool. Um, and I'm just going to refresh to make sure I didn't um, screw that up by creating the branch here and then not having it. Should be fine though. So yeah, there we go. There's still only two branches. So uh, I'm just going to make one little change and then push it up. I'm just going to create something called a readme file. And what that readme file is, it explains everything. Um, readme.md. It uses something called um, markup, markdown text. And uh, I'll, I'll get, I'll, I'll do that later. I just wanted to show you guys that this is what we can do. And uh, I'm going to do get status um, readme. So I'm just going to get add. We're going to add that readme file, and then we're going to uh, get commit stat dash m, and we'll say uh, adding readme. An empty readme. So see what I mean? Like something like this is just very important because let's say I wanted to update and I didn't know where I made the change. Uh, update adding empty read me. So I'm gonna do that. And now we say get push. Um, and I believe we can just say origin. And we shouldn't we don't have to specify unless we wanted to push into another branch. So if I just say origin it should sync up with that um, an origin in this case is it's talking about that um, development branch so now if I go back to overview and um, you see here this branch this dev branch was updated 20, 28 seconds ago so that just went in so oh, I don't know what I hit so we go back into repositories and I go back into my personal website and if I switch my branch to dev you'll see something's different and you can see here the last time this thing was changed 11 minutes ago and we just added this new file here so um, that's that and um, this is github and the thing about this is if you lose something you can always get back access to, access to it so that is really nice and um, the thing here, we'll, we'll get to that later because I'll show you what will happen later down the line when we clean this code up, throw some tests in there, and make sure that it works the way that we want it to work. So um, with that being said, it's 9.59, so right up on that 10 o'clock mark. Um, I'll stop here for today, and then we'll pick up tomorrow with digging more into those, um, those queries. We'll work with filtering, and we'll work with... Um, I think it's called pagination where you can determine how many um, results you want to be presented to you. So um, thanks for tuning in. See you guys tomorrow. And um, if you have any questions, drop them on as a comment on this page or you know, reach out to me on social media, whether it's Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. I prefer Instagram, but um, all are accepted. And um, I'll see you guys tomorrow.